This short tutorial is going to explain uh, how we can produce Gantt charts very quickly uh, within Excel. Uh, it all relies upon uh, one uh, equation or one formula uh, and this is the formula here and it uses the repeat function and that repeats a character a number of times. Uh, let's uh, take a little bit more look at the kind of inputs that we have to this equation. Uh, we have a start date, we have uh, a number of work days uh, for the duration of an activity uh, and if it's spanning a weekend we might just add the weekend time in as well because that extends the duration but doesn't necessarily affect the cost of, a, of, of an activity if uh, people aren't working weekends. Uh, we can choose a symbol uh, that we want to, sh to, dis uh, to display uh, in our Gantt chart and we can choose an end note. We can, uh, in this case I've just tagged on the names of the people uh, that are doing uh, the actual activity. Uh, and the end date is calculated very simply, start date, uh, number of work days, number of weekend days and uh, there we go, that's, that's the end date. But how do we dis how we display that in this uh, nice uh, looking Gantt chart, which is uh, very easy uh, to change? Uh, well, I can maybe show you how easy it is to change. Let's reduce the duration of this uh, to six days. Uh, well, we can see what's happened there is uh, the whole Gantt charts update. There's obviously uh, these activities here are linked to the completion of that activity there, so it's it's had an impact on other uh, parts of the Gantt chart too. If I'll just return that back to 15. Okay, uh, we can maybe take a look to see how this repeat function is working. Uh, the first part of the uh, formula is repeating a blank space and that's clearly going to put in uh, the blank space before the uh, bar activity. So it's going to repeat that uh, a number of times and it's going to take this start date here of June 20th and it's going to take the minimum uh, date here and it works out the difference and that's how many blank spaces it's going to put in because our Gantt chart will start uh, from the minimum date that's in this column here. So that's the first part, that's going to introduce the uh, spaces before the bar then we're going to repeat another character and in this case we're going to, the character we're going to repeat is actually here it's in uh, cell E5 and I can uh, make that character uh, um, be anything I like really and I'm going to repeat that a number of times to represent the duration of the uh, of the activity and then finally this final part here is just going to add on this end note so when we press return we have some blank space uh, we have some uh, activity, some character to represent the activity to generate the bar, and we have an end note. That's, that's all it's doing, it's doing nothing more complicated than that. Uh, one thing that you would have to use though is a, uh, a, a monoscript. Uh, now a monoscript has, uh, each character has the same width. Uh, now that's not true of all fonts. If I, uh, let's, uh, let's put this into something like, uh, uh, let's put it in Arial. Okay, that doesn't work quite in the same way because a blank character isn't as wide as this particular character here. So it's very important that you select only monoscripts. So uh, I'll just uh, switch it back there to uh, a monoscript. Uh, and there's a number of monoscripts that you could choose from. Um, let's also just insert a new activity. So I think it's just a matter of going insert. Maybe there's some kind of client approval uh, process required. Uh, Let's pop that there, and maybe I should have started with a capital letter. Uh, and let's make that uh, let's make that uh, three days long, uh, and uh, let's give it a start date equal to obviously the end date of the uh, issue of the report. Uh, and let's put our client in as an end note, and let's put our character in now there's uh, we could we could actually use our uh, pick from a drop down list we could use one of the symbols that we've already used or if we wanted to we could uh, insert a symbol which I'll just show you the process there um, and uh, there's lots of symbols to choose from and some of the kind of weirder symbols if we wanted to uh, we might want to choose that symbol there maybe for a hard black uh, rect uh, square there so 
OK, everything's ready now. All I have to do is copy this formula into... Uh, I also need to just calculate the end date first as well. OK, then I need to copy this formula into there. And OK, you can see that's how quickly it is to generate new activities. Uh, this is a very quick way of producing Gantt charts and it's a very flexible method that's the reason I like I like it because it's very I tend to do a lot of short plans uh, and I don't have to load up a, a Microsoft project or some other package like that but it's very flexible I can I can use this now to do any calculation I like if I want to work out the costs and uh, there's literally any, any, anything I could do. It's, just, it's completely open and versatile. And uh, this type of planning works very well for me. So uh, please uh, download a copy and uh, use the Gantt chart yourself. Thanks for listening.